and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, I'm going to show how to do a drawing for Inktober. Now in Inktober, you can draw a drawing with ink every day if you want to, or you can take the alternate challenges, which are to draw a picture every other day or you can just draw one weekly. I usually do the weekly challenge because that's all that I have time for. So in this video I'm going to be drawing a mummy coming out of a tomb and if you want to follow along traditionally you can use any kind of ink pens that you want. There's Sharpies and Micron Pigmas and uh, all kinds of different ones. Make sure that you know which ones are waterproof and which ones aren't. You can use alcohol markers too because they have ink, but they are also not going to be smear proof. So you want to watch your different materials and know what they'll do with each other. I'm also going to use a little bit of some watercolor for uh, tinting my picture. But first what I wanted to do was make a photo reference. And so I've gotten some pictures from Pixabay and I found a picture of an old tomb and then I found some pictures of a guy that is, looks kind of like a mummy or a ghoul or something. And anyway, I liked that pose. So I'm combining these two and Infinite Painter for Android and you can go ahead and you can uh, use the lasso tool on one of the pictures and make sure that you have these pictures on two different layers. But you can go ahead and use the lasso tool on the uh, mummy looking figure and just go ahead and use the scissors to, after you get the, the lasso the way that you want it to. And the scissors will put it on another layer after it's been clipped. And then what you can do is go ahead and erase the background and here I'm sort of playing with the opacity of that layer. And so I've got it finally using the scissors. I finally got it clipped to a separate layer here and you just do the scissors and then clip it and then paste it onto the second layer. And I'm erasing out the background and I'm not going to be real uh, technical about it. I just kind of want to get an idea of what the figure would look like in front of the tomb. And so I'm just kind of erasing it out on, on that layer. And I just want to take a minute and say that Infinite Painter not only is really good for doing traditional media, but it's actually a very good photo editor and you can do lots of different effects and things with your photos in Infinite Painter. And so here I went ahead and exported it out and then made it into a photo reference. And then I found some more photo references from pixabay.com and this is where they have royalty free photos that you can use for references. I found some skeletons, I found some toy mummies, and there's a cartoon mummy. And I just kind of want to get an idea of what they look like, how they're wrapped, what people sort of think as a concept of the mummy. And so I've got all these on my screen for photo references. And here I want to just kind of make a really rough first sketch. And make sure you do this with pencil. What I usually do is do the ink for the very last thing, but even if you do some washes over the ink, make sure that you have a waterproof ink. But first I would say do your rough sketch in pencil so that you can erase and you can refine and do things like that. And I'm using the Blackwell pencil in Infinite Painter and if you're following on traditionally you pick whatever kind of paper that you want and you might want to not use this for your final paper. This might be uh, your first rough idea and then you would trace it each time that you refine it. But here's what I'm doing is just kind of making a rough sketch of what I want in there. How I want the, the mummy positioned and the tomb and that I want it to be at night and have a little bit of a crescent moon up there. And so I'm just kind of trying to make a just a, a general idea here. 
And at first I thought I might leave the um, one of the legs inside the tomb and make it look like he's stepping out. But later I, I changed that idea. So here I am just trying to kind of start refining the the features of the mummy. And right now it's really sketchy because that's kind of the way I do things. I just sort of start with a, a real rough sketch and then sort of work down and erase and refine it. And so I've started a second layer here so that I can make a more refined sketch. And if you're doing this traditionally, you can either sort of erase, you can use tracing paper and uh, just get the general outline again and start with a new piece and uh, of paper if you want to and just kind of <clears throat> start refining more on it. And so I'm just kind of getting a rough idea here of how I want the bandages to look and getting the tilt of the head correct and his hands. And what I want to do with this mummy is make him look sort of skeletal. Some mummies have a lot more wrapping on them. As you can see, the cartoon one I found is just mostly wrapping and the the reference that I'm using there is um, someone in body paint. So it just kind of looks like a full person there, but I don't want that because most mummies look all dried up and, and the bones are poking out and stuff. And so I want this one to look like the bones are showing through the bandages. So that's kind of the idea of what I'm trying to get here. And so that's why I have the walking skeletons photo reference right there because I just kind of want to see what um, it would look like if it's just the, the bones. So I want that as a anatomy reference there. And so I'm also using those to see what the foot would look like and the leg bones and just trying to get sort of a, a general idea of what a skeleton would look like, but I don't want him totally skeleton. So it's kind of a balancing act here as to figure out, you know, how much bandages you want and how much uh, bones you want through. But I definitely want the bandages to look old and ragged and like they're coming off of him and they're coming unwrapped because he's moving and so it's making his wrapping come off. And so here I'm sort of working on the shape of the rib cage and I just want to kind of give a, a <clears throat> indication of the rib bones. And what I did for this photo reference that I have now is I used my Poser 11 um, program. And what this program is, is you can download models and you can make them pose any way that you want. And so I found a mummy on their um, store. They have uh, models that you can buy, models that come with the program. And then there's uh, extra content that you can buy. And they actually had a mummy and a sort of a skeleton. And so this helped me greatly because now I can see uh, how the bones would stick out and how the wrapping that uh, would look like if it's coming off. And so I went ahead and posed him roughly like what I have in the, the photo reference there and in my Poser 11 program, which... I need to review and actually show you how it works someday in a future video, so stay tuned for that. And so I can see kind of how the leg bones work here and, and how the wrapping goes around the legs and the feet. And I decided to go ahead and show uh, both feet and just make it look like he stepped out of the doorway here. And so I can also see the, the bones of the foot and see how they look as they're partially wrapped. And so that's just what I'm working on here. And I've started a third layer now because I'm starting to clean up the sketch even more. And so you might use another sheet of tracing paper for this if you're following along traditionally. And again, stay working in pencil at this point because you're doing a lot of erasing and you're trying to get your main drawing done and it's better to do it now than to try to correct it with ink because it's pretty much 
impossible unless you use white paint to correct it with ink so you want to get it as correct as possible while you're working with pencil so here I'm just kind of working on the head and I'm using the Blackwell pencil and infinite painter still and I just want to work on the eyes and I want them to look like empty sockets there so I'm just um, making them dark and I'm just kind of working on the the edge of the jawline but I still want his head to be partially wrapped so I'm showing bandages on his skull and some of them going across on top of his nose a little bit and then the bandages are coming unwrapped so I want uh, an end of a bandage to be dangling off his head there and anything to just show that he's he's very ragged looking so this is the end of part one of my mummy series and in part two we're going to go ahead and finish drawing him and get all the main elements that we want in the picture before we start adding the watercolor and inking so if you're interested to see that hit the subscribe button and thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and i will catch you later